after all the years of creating, many technical things have been learned, but also it's the visionary things. It's what's going on behind the painting, because the painting itself is really just a window or a doorway into a whole realm of thought and intellectual understandings and idea and historic relationships. And you just have to sometimes know how to turn the key and open the door. Whether it be the prairies of Manitoba and Saskatchewan or the rising rolling foothills, that's all inspirational. It's just like we live in such a stunning part of the world. But one region for me that certainly brings it all together is out here on the west coast where you not only have uh, great open vistas, but you have mountains rising vertically straight out of the ocean. And in some ways I feel, I feel blessed to be able to go, I can bring this together and then reflect it back in, in an art form that then other people can enjoy. There's still nothing like going out into nature itself where I get the source of my inspiration. And it doesn't matter if I've been to the same site, you know, dozens of times, it's fabulous to be out there. When creating a uh, work of art, it's, it's not good enough to simply go out and document the location. That can be readily done with the click of the camera. And the paintings aren't necessarily about site-specific locations. Some of them are more reminiscences of being there, being on the spot, and what it actually felt like. Some of us see more details than others. And I happen to be, for whatever reason, a person who looks and analyzes details consistently. So when I go out and look at the, the structures of trees, it's not just for the basic shape. It's for what defines that as an actual maple tree or an oak tree and how all the organic elements fit together. And then from that understanding, then I can create the impression of what that actually looks like in a painting. Probably the... Uh, time that I made the greatest decision uh, in relationship to art and being a dedicated professional artist came in about grade 10 when I saw Claude Monet and I was fascinated no end and just see this mingling of colors and forms and little textures and then to step back and all of a sudden it becomes a complete reality and for me that was like magic and then you have to ask the question well how do they do that how do they put it together and make it work and so I go that's what I want to do. I grew up in uh, a place called Huntsville, Ontario in Muskoka and it was steeped a little bit in folklore and a mingling of history because that's where uh, Tom Thompson and the group of seven painted. I would sometimes just go uh, for hikes in the Algonquin Park and go out and paint for a day. One of the really interesting things was to end up on Canoe Lake, the same lake that Tom Thompson died in and that was really unique to be able to touch history and then feel a sense that you're going to be part of this uh, greater picture. There came a uh, turning point where I realized I'm painting in many different styles. I have the ability and the understanding. And then the big goal is to eventually get back to a unique style of your own. And that's something that can't be forced. It's something that comes out of your whole entire background. To take the inspiration from nature is fabulous, but then to bring it in the studio, and that's where I get to really create gives me additional freedoms because I'm not being overly dictated to what's going on out of doors. My technical approach to make sure that all the subtleties of um, mist and atmosphere and light and contrast is all working in the paintings. So what I do is uh, multiple overlapping planes on the canvas. So the first layer of paint totally covers it with almost a random approach where I'm creating a sense of atmosphere in the upper section rolling into this nice dark solid base. Then there's the introduction of light, but it's always paint on top of paint and allowing some colors to show through from underneath. And so eventually what happens is it gets more and more refined over time and then closer and closer to the final details. And the details are important to me because it adds that complexity that's actually in life into the paintings. And then the paintings become a balance between simplicity and complexity Paintings just don't come about and happen. 
They happen because the artist designs them and makes them work and makes it all flow. So what I'm actually doing once the pieces are created is guiding the viewer's eye throughout the whole composition and to take the viewer on a visual journey. So once they enter into the painting, they can start to travel with their eye and their mind and that allows it to have a certain longevity, which a simpler way of painting may not allow the viewer to get so fully engaged in. With karate, I've been now at it for 19 years and uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to achieve the level of a third degree black belt. And it takes years for it to evolve. It's like uh, developing your art. It takes years to be able to master all the techniques, but it's a creative process that's going on. And every once in a while, you get this epiphany where all of a sudden you realize what you can do. So in some ways, it's very similar to the painting. It's like, with painting, you get to learn all these technical skills and you get to understand them. And once you have them, then you have the freedom to really create. And within the martial arts, you learn all your technical skills, which is hours and hours, and then you get to become creative. You know, this whole thing about painting and creativity is like a continuous journey. And that journey, it's about the external world and the internal world coming together in a work of art. And so when you look at one of the paintings, whoever I am is actually in that painting. The painting is a reflection of who I am. And at the same time, I utilize the world around me to reflect what I've seen into the painting. And of course, by doing this, I want to elevate the paintings to a level of fine art where it becomes part of Canadian context or Canadian cultural context so that it becomes part of this broader picture of what the evolution of Canadian painting is all about and it'll become hopefully just part of Canadian art history. <laughs>